926. That is how many apps were blocked so far just this morning trying to send who knows what to who knows where. And what's super crazy is I'm not even logged into a single app. And the number keeps going up. Jeez, I mean, we know that apps are tracking us, but to actually see it, it's pretty wild. It's no wonder that we've lost complete control of our privacy and data. And that is exactly why I have the app phone from Unplugged. They believe that we shouldn't have to give up the comforts of today's tech just to have some say in who gets our data. So they developed a privacy focused smartphone that still has the camera, the apps, the battery life and all the usual stuff, but it is built with privacy in mind, like a physical button that actually disconnects the battery and even a self destruct option. But we gonna get onto that shortly. So thank you Unplugged for sending over the phone and for sponsoring this video so we can see just how screwed we are. Okay, let's just take a couple of steps back here. So I asked you on my channel to let me know which apps you use so I can install them on the phone and see if they actually track you. And boy, did you guys have a long laundry list of apps. We have the usual suspects like Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, YouTube, TikTok. And then we got things like Reddit and Netflix and various airlines and various retailers, some games. Uh, you also suggested installing browsers like Chrome and DuckDuckGo and even Brave, but uh, Brave comes pre-installed with the phone. So it's a pretty comprehensive list of the apps that we would normally just install without thinking twice. Now, again, I am not logged into a single app. All I did was take your list and just install them, open them once to make sure that they work, and that's pretty much it. I purposefully didn't even put a SIM card in this phone. It's just sitting on my desk here idle as I'm recording this. And those numbers just keep climbing. So I'm clearly not using the phone, right? Let's have a deeper look here. So this is the firewall. That's the first obviously big feature on the up phone. Let's just kind of dive into that. So we can see how very clearly we have here today's block list. We have yesterday's block list. And if you scroll down, you can see the offenders. So we've got the number keeps climbing, but we've got here trackers blocked today. So basically what that means is the app name on the left here, CNBC TV, and then the number of times, the number of trackers that is actually trying to communicate from the device out into who knows where. So we scroll down. I mean, you can just see for yourself, just like my mind's blown. When I, when I see this, I mean, we know that it happening, but when I see it, it's just wild to me. So now the big question is, well, who, who are they calling? Like, where are these apps trying to connect to that the firewall actually block that connection? And thankfully, we can actually see that. So on the phone, we have something called an antivirus. Now, it's your normal antivirus that checks for malware, but this one also checks for trackers. So now if we run a full scan, I mean, I did one earlier, but let me just do another one very, very quickly. So it's running a full scan. It's going through to make sure there's no malware, nothing hidden inside the app. By the way, it does that obviously when you install the app in the first place. And it's also looking for those trackers telling me scanning is in progress, 34%. Uh, let me just speed this up on two times speed so you don't have to watch it. Now that's finished. Now we're gonna see full results. So let's click on that button. So this is how many apps were scanned. This is how many trackers were identified. But now watch this. You can go into each of these apps. Let's just say this game. They found nine trackers in this particular game. So we have all these things. Um, okay, so app loving Max. Now what you can do is you can see it's got a category called advertising. If you click on that button, it tells you app loving tracks device ID, location and behavior for ad monetization. It builds detailed profile, risking extensive tracking. Privacy issues include data sharing with ad networks. We have Facebook ads, we have Google ads, we have Crashlytics. Crashlytics is Google's Lytics crash logs and device info. It risks live profiling with Google's network. Privacy concerns include data integration. A lot of people look at ads and they go, okay, this is harmless. I mean, it's just an ad, right? Well, actually, no, because ads, as you can see, collects a lot of information about you and your movement. And I'm going to be careful here how we phrase this, but 
We've seen cases where a special company was able to track their target to a specific location because all they did was buy all the advertising data for that region. They had some information, they didn't know exactly where this target actually lives, but they knew the general facility and some stuff on social media and some other methods, which I'm not gonna get into, but they were able to locate the target. They were able to filter out all the other people that didn't actually apply and figure out where this person actually lived. All because they bought the advertising data for that specific reason. So no, Mr. and Mrs. Who cares if I get ads for Target? That's the least of the issue here. Now, as you saw going in that list, there's like Crashlytics or whatever it was called. These bug companies, which essentially you would think make sense. I mean, a company wants to know if their app crashes, so that should be fine. So yes and also no. So number one, give me the option to report the crash, so it's my choice. Number two, why does it keep running continuously? If my app is working, it doesn't really need to run, does it? And number three, which is the most concerning, what information is it actually sending? Why is there no transparency about that? I mean, that's just one app with nine trackers in there. And if you look through this list, what's interesting is a lot of the big company names are actually also in here. So Target has got seven trackers. They got Proximity. So this, oh, look at that one. Alt Beacon collects location and device data for proximity analytics via beacons. It risks tracking physical movements. Privacy concerns involves data used by beacon operators. <laughs> like there's just a lot in here and every single one of these has a whole bunch of trackers. I mean, 10 trackers, nine trackers, six trackers, seven trackers. It's just, there's just a lot that's going on here. In fact, let's just quickly see if our firewall has blocked anymore. Look at this, 1,219, and the number keeps rising. Look at DoorDash right at the top, they're overtaking CNBC TV. I, I had not logged in. This is the part that like my brain can't handle. Not logged in, just installed. Anybody wanna take a guess of what this number will climb to by the time we finish this recording? I'm gonna show you at the end. Okay, so the app phone doesn't actually have a Google Play Store. It has its own app store, which is obviously how I installed all the apps. Apps that are actually in the store are checked for compatibility with the app phone. There are also apps in there which are marked as external, which means that you can install them, but they haven't gotten kind of the stamp of approval around to test them to make sure that it works with the app phone. So now, before we move to a very interesting feature called the self-destruct feature, yes, that is actually a thing which I'm a little bit worried to try, so I'm gonna just park that for a second. Let's talk about some of the other privacy features. I mentioned before that the beauty of this is that you actually get a decent camera and you've got all the good stuff that you expect from a smartphone. So what do you do with the photos? Well, they've got something called the app photos. And the thing with the app photos is that it's encrypted local storage. And by the way, you can actually stick a micro SD card in this as well, which remember the good old days when we could do that? So the local storage is actually encrypted and you have an option to back up to a cloud storage, which is also encrypted. Now, what's important is only you have the keys. You have a passphrase key, and that is actually the only way to unlock it. So in other words, if law enforcement, let's just say, they served unplugged with a warrant to go through your photos, they would have nothing to give them. They could give them the encrypted files and there's no way to decrypt it because only you own the keys. Now, of course, the app phone comes with a built-in no-log VPN, which you can switch on or off as you wish. And speaking of on and off, check this out. So it's got something called controls where very quickly you can access the camera, the Bluetooth, the microphone, and the location. So if you switch the camera off, it's actually switching it off across the board, not just in a specific app, but across the board. In fact, let's try access the camera whilst we're doing that. And it says the camera is blocked on the app privacy center. And in this case, off actually does mean off. <laughs> All right, who was taking bets on how many we're gonna get? We're up to 1,322. So since we're back in the privacy center, let's look at the bottom there. Under controls, you've got a bunch of options. You've got 
ad trackers, which is obviously you want to enable, otherwise all that stuff that we've been blocking will simply go out. You can want to enable or disable social media, gambling content, adult content, and under the hardware camera microphone, those are the same controls that we saw on that other screen. All right, and if we scroll down, we're gonna see network. Under network, we have Wi-Fi, we have 2G network, which is important because when you have things like MZ catchers, they really love that 2G network. I've got a whole video about that. I'll link to that after this. Then we have Bluetooth and then location. Let's go to access. So of course we've got fingerprints, which is kind of secure, normal security. We've got the shortcut button, which I like to set up. So the physical button here on the side here, here a little bit difficult to see because it's black here, but there's the button. And then next to it is a little toggle. And that toggle is your physical off switch. When you toggle that, your battery is physically disconnected, it's air gapped, which basically means when your phone's off, your phone is actually off. A lot of people don't realize that in your current phone, when you, go, when you switch your phone off, it actually doesn't switch off. It goes into low power mode. Certain things still run. That's why you things like find my phone or find my device are still able to function even when the phone is technically off. In this case, off means off. All right, so now we come to the part that I've been waiting for, the emergency reset or the self-destruct. So setting up an emergency reset feature allows you to securely reset your device to factory setting and remove all the user data. How does that work? Basically, what happens is you have a PIN that you unlock your phone with. Now let's just say somebody makes you put in your PIN for whatever reason, and you don't want them to see anything that's on your phone. You can give them this PIN, and it's gonna be a different PIN than the one that unlocks your phone. And once they do that, essentially what happens is it activates the emergency reset. I really think they should have called it self-destruct. The emergency reset, and then it's going to reset your entire phone to factory defaults, wiping out everything on the device. And there's nothing they can do to stop it. Uh, I like to have it, in, especially if I'm doing any international travel, for obvious reason. So we're still in the privacy center. Um, before we check the final count of how many trackers were blocked whilst making this video, a couple of final things. Firstly, I like how anybody can use this phone. You don't have to be a tech geek. It's a phone made for regular people who have just had enough of their data being sold without the ability to do anything about it. So if that is you and you don't wanna live off the grid, use cash only, buy a burner flip phone every week, then this becomes a real solution. The next thing is I am still shocked uh, at how many times big name apps are actively and consistently contacting third party servers. That is something I, I just can't get over as you can tell. I've now uninstalled a lot of these apps on my other phone and I'm only gonna be using their website from now on. And just speaking of website, the app phone doesn't actually block stuff from within your browser. You can use something like Brave to do that. So if you use Facebook or Google or whatever, you're still being tracked in the normal way that they do those tracking. At least with the app phone, you have significantly reduced your digital footprint and the amount of data that is leaking from your phone. And before we get the final count here, it's important to know that this doesn't come with Google mobile service called GMS. So what does that mean? The good news is that it doesn't share your data with Google. The app phone has a compatibility core layer that emulates most of these functions. So you get things like Google Maps and YouTube and they work perfectly fine. You may find certain apps are reliant on specifically the GMS, maybe it's a service or a function that's not still here and therefore that may not work. But yes, when you use Google services, you are going to have to log into your Google account to make that work, obviously. All right, it's time. What do you think the number is of how many apps were blocked just whilst making this video? Not using the phone, not logged in, just having the phone here as I am doing this. Yeah, okay. I just, yeah. With Fox News winning the race, amazing. I mean, just, 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 that's just wild. Look at this. 
Uh, I mean, there is so much more we could have gone into. They've had external testing done on their phones. Users are continuously testing the phones to make sure that they're secure. Um, there's open source of their software as well. I'm gonna have a link below so you can check it out for yourself. Also, if you have no idea what an MZ catcher is, go check out this video right over here and why you should know about an MZ catcher. Give the video a quick thumbs up as I go and reset this phone and actually use it. And I'm gonna see you in this video. Let's go.